position is the Bible is literally true, scientifically accurate. The world was created in six literal days, about 6,000 years ago. The evolution theory currently being taught at taxpayer expense in our schools is one of the dumbest and most dangerous ideas in the history of the world. Anybody that believes they came from a rock needs some real serious help. And that's what we're here for. We're here to help. We want to help, no doubt about it. <laughs> we, have the, we have what you need. So tune in and uh, join us. We, are, uh, we have Dinosaur Adventure Land here in our backyard, and we have lots of kids come all the time. And so we just five, closed at 5 o'clock, uh, four minutes ago. Um, and so you're welcome to come down and visit our Dinosaur Adventure Land here in Pensacola if you come. You'll have the time of your life. Awesome place to check out. Two 200-foot cable slides, 50-foot rope swing, climbing wall, Congo Trail, Fossil Dig Pit. you got to come check out. And dinosaur Adventureland. Brand new Dinosaur Adventureland water. Yes, from the time of the dinosaurs, just a couple thousand billion years, ago. years ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have $1 off. You buy the water for a dollar and get a dollar cents. off. Get the water for 75 and get a dollar off. You can't you beat a deal. You can't like. beat a deal. We'll pay you a quarter that. to come. Wow. Wow. Folks, well, who's on the phone there, John? We've got Jared with us. Jared. Yes, sir, Jared. Go ahead. Hey, it's been a while again. Yes, sir. Now, this is the Jared from, was it Minnesota or? No, it's uh, New Hampshire, actually. New Hampshire. Yeah. Been there, beautiful, beautiful state. Got a lot of granite up there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I haven't called in about a week, and I kind of missed it. Though, so we, um, we missed you, Jared. Did you get converted during that week? Man, I told you before, Kim. I've already been converted. And you converted. Well, we need to convert you back then. Not a problem. No, but according to you, I'm saved forever, so I can you know, do whatever I want, right? Well, I, I don't know who is really saved and who's not. You may have thought you were and had a you know head conversion without a heart conversion. I don't know that. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that whenever I was trying to think of Jesus first, that in my heart and something like that, that uh, was pretty real, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so you're, you're talking about these cures and impact craters and stuff like that? Correct. Okay. Nick, can you give me a brief synopsis of what you think the explanation is? Well, I think that uh, the earth was created in six days, about 6,000 years ago, and it was perfect. And during the flood, uh, the Bible says the fountains of the deep broke open, so... If you check Walt Brown's website, creationscience.com, he's got a really good article on there, like I think four pages, about the, uh, the mechanics of um, meteors being ejected from Earth and ending up in orbit, rocks being shot up. It's called the water hammer effect, I believe is the correct, correct thing, where you get an enormous amount of water under extreme pressure, and it'll shoot things like a cannon uh, into orbit around the Earth. So I, I just like the best, Kent, that if you did... Uh uh, a thermodynamic calculation on that, that you would show that the amount of energy that it would take to inject a meteor capable of making that kind of impact crater would be so great that it, it would just, uh, it, it would be literally impossible. Well, I don't know. You know, it sounds to me like the whole Earth coming from nothing, the whole universe coming from a Big Bang, which was a dot the size of, uh, a trillionth the size of a proton, that sounds like it's clearly impossible, too. Yeah, it sounds kind of hard to believe, but the thing about the theory of evolution, which is what you're against, is that it has nothing to do with that. The Big Bang theory has nothing to do with the theory of evolution. Oh, it has everything to do with it, because you have to start off to there. define what you mean by evolution first. No, no, I don't have to. No, when I speak of evolution, I mean I mean biological evolution. Okay, you just defined it. Thank you. Okay. I mean, this, this stuff about, like, cosmic evolution and all that is kind of a... Well, then you don't have a complete theory, then, because you're starting with something no, already... No, you don't have a complete theory. It's not supposed to be a complete theory. The okay. theory of evolution is not a complete theory that explains everything. It explains the origin of species. Okay, I can show you textbook after textbook, including college textbooks, including encyclopedias, which do think the Big Bang Theory is part of evolution. So... That's my gripe, since I'm paying for these textbooks. Look, they, they use the word evolution, as you point out, in several different ways. Right. But the theory of biological evolution has nothing to do with that. Okay, well, when you say biological evolution, then you're defining what you're talking about. But if you say evolution has nothing to do with that, well, then we really can't take much of I would agree that biological it. evolution has nothing to do with the Big Bang. But the general theory of evolution has everything to do with it. That's, you got to start with something to evolve. I know we're kind of nitpicking here, but when people in colloquial English say evolution, it's pretty clear that they mean biological evolution unless they present it with anything else. So it doesn't seem like you really have a point about that at all. Well, I can just say what the textbooks say, and they say over and over and over, it is all part of the theory. You're not going to get a biology textbook to talk about cosmic evolution. Huh. You have no idea what you just said, okay? I can show you... They'll talk the about the, they'll, they, they will talk about the molten earth for me. Because that's the immediate prelude to set up for abiogenesis and evolution. That's yeah. the whole point. Like, so, so that's you're not the same thing as like 
stars forming in black holes, and galaxies, and you know, globular clusters, etc. That's so totally if, different. If I find a biology textbook that does talk about that, would you uh, come on the air and sing his happy birthday and apologize? Oh, it's uh, my birthday next month, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a very good singer. You probably wouldn't want to hear it, but uh, I, I will at least see the point. Okay. <laughs> well, you, I can show you dozens of textbooks. If you come down, I'll take you a tour of our library, and we'll look up 20 of them in, in, in less than an hour. A biology textbook. A biology textbook. College bio. I just was handed a 2005 edition college biology textbook. The guy finished the course and said, Brother Hovind, I don't need this anymore. You can have it for your library. Uh, I just because cut when you buy them, they're like 90 bucks, but you can only sell them back for about 30 or 10. I just yeah. cut the page out because I always cut pages out in order to laminate them and get them flat. So let me. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, look. Even if they do talk about it, it's irrelevant because it's just to connect the age of the Earth. Uh, well, my the theory of evolution. My point is, if you're going to have evolution, what evolved, and how did it come? You know, you don't have a coherent theory unless you can go back to the beginning of some kind. No, that's that's not true, Ken. But whenever you have a particular field of science and you're investigating a particular theory, you don't have to have a complete theory like that encapsulates inside everything else. Like whenever we whenever we discover um, like particle physics, right? We study uh, protons, electrons, neutrons. We didn't have to know about quarks and leptons and neutrinos. So you could have said back then, like in the 30s and 40s, that we didn't have a coherent theory of particle physics, that we couldn't go all the way down. Mm -hmm. well, I, I do understand your point, but my point is the textbooks do include all of it. And I'm looking up in this brand new 2005 college textbook. It's got two polar bears dancing on the front of it. It's called Biology Life on Earth, 7th edition by some names I cannot pronounce. Uh, Bruce Byers is one of them. The Teresa and Gerald Outerisk, Outer Cirque. Uh, uh, 2005, brand new, college textbook. Let's see how many pages in this one. 890 pages, okay? Um, looking, well, you go ahead and keep talking. Tell us about why you don't think it's part of it, but I'll show you where it is in the book, so that's my gripe. Oh, they, they may mention it, but it's not part of the theory. Okay, are you, are you, now, 20 years ago, nobody would make the argument you're making because they thought they had an you know, airtight case, but they're retreating now into this position you're taking because they don't want, uh, you know, biological evolution has enough problems on its own without being included with the baggage of all the other forms of evolution, which I mentioned. I, I, I guess you, if you want to look at it that way, there's sure. a totally different theory. Okay, you well, don't need the Big Bang Theory to have theory of evolution. All you need is a long span of time. Here we go, page 268. I believe I found it. All you have to have is a long span of time. Precisely. Yeah, study state theory, which could have provided a long span of time for evolution to happen in the compatible with evolutionary theory. You don't need the Big Bang Theory. Well, what... Uh, where did time, space, matter come from then to have your relevant intent? Even if I granted you that God exists and whatever, and he created whatever to start it all, that's totally irrelevant. That has nothing to do with studying evolution. Okay, well, tell me the about theory your theory of independence. Okay, I disagree, but tell me about your theory of evolution then. What, what makes you think that animals are somehow able to produce different kinds of offspring, either now or ever were in the past? Let's get one thing out of the way before we go to that topic, if that's okay. I wanted to address your thing with the meteors and the craters. Okay. Okay. Are you aware that uh, at certain points in the geological uh, fossil record, of course, you don't have the term fossil record. In or geologic record. column. Geologic column doesn't exist. Neither well, you don't think that exists, right. So, okay. So, um, are you aware that uh, at certain points in supposed uh, fossil record, where extinction events are known to have occurred, that there are layers of materials that are evidence for your impact. You're talking about iridium? I'm not sure what this is. I think that's one of them. That is, that is it, iridium. Yes, I'm very familiar with that. Okay. And you don't think that this supports the idea that the word extinction events? No.